Hello everybody, I'm back. It's your girl Connie. So make sure um, you know, you subscribe, you know, and I hope that you're you know you're enjoying the videos. And so as promised, you know, I'm back again with part two of what am I's video, which is you know the meeting Joy, the 28-year-old lady from South Sudan who's got acres of land and she's changing the agriculture narrative because she's an agripreneur because I didn't know that word existed but it's I love it and so we're going to watch part two and so uh, I hope that you will enjoy this part two so make sure you share like and subscribe and you know just tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend okay so help me get to 1000 subscribers and I will be so you know grateful you know just keeps me motivated to keep doing these videos for you guys and so let's get straight to this one. Oh, you fix it. You see? That's how it is. You have cassava here. Uh, we so in the previous video, he scared me because I, I was like, woo. And yeah, so he scared me so much. So <laughs> do have some few cassava, but it's not yet that season for Jeez. cassava. Oh my goodness. So yes. like, if it's not that season, then how do you irrigate your crops? We actually, like I told you, we are so blessed by Mother Nature that we do have the Nile right adjacent to us. So we pump water right straight from the Nile and we irrigate our... Which means the Nile is saving you during dry season. Uh, yes. Because we are currently in dry season in here, right? Yes, that's so correct. So you actually use the Nile. Yes. Can I check it out? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. So Maya, this Whoa. is where we pump our water, Whoa. right? It's just right next to the, the farm. That's really nice. Wow. From the Nile, as you can see, you know, we've got a generator and our piping system that pushes the water right straight to the garden. Amazing. Yeah. So which means you don't even have to pay for water. We don't have to pay for the water. This is what makes Africa blessed. But it's not being portrayed out there. All the narrative that is out there is about war-torn Africa. Africa devastated by diseases and poverty and hunger and all those kind of stuff. And that's why I want people like you to help me change the narrative. You don't think I need to help you get a YouTube channel? I'd love that. We have everything. 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 And you know what? And that's why myself, through, you know, these videos, I'm getting educated. So let's get educated together. <laughs> so join the family. Hit the subscribe button. And I guess I will check out her YouTube channel because I guess she's going to start one as well. So, um, wow. Love this. What will you call your channel? Uh, that is still in the making. You, you know what? There's going to be a description. Uh, uh, uh. There's going to be a channel link in the description. We don't have uh, any idea of the name that we're going to call the channel, but I know that she's going to have a channel right here. So, hey, do me a favor. Go to your description box. Go click on it. Go to your YouTube channel. Go and subscribe. And tell her that what Maya told you to subscribe. Thank you so much. You know what? Yes, subscribe as well. Subscribe. Yeah. I'm walking barefooted because I want to connect with nature in here, you know. It feels so good to be back again in the farm. Yes. But I just want to ask you, how does it feel to be a farmer? That is a very interesting question, Maya. You know, there's something really therapeutic, as you would say, about being a farmer and just being out in the nature, connecting with Mother Earth. You know, it is very therapeutic. And then also as a farmer, really to see the hard work of your hands, you know, being able to feed other people when you plant your seed until all the way and nurture it all the way to selling it, it, it gives you a sense of fulfillment, you know, and then also you're really contributing directly towards problems in the in the yes and i think that's a very interesting point because i think farming you plant a seed you see you see it sprout it grows mm -hmm. and then you have the end product so it's something that is tangible and i think it's so fulfilling you know when you have that and so i i have beautiful souvenirs as well as you know when we were farming coffee and stuff like that and bananas and avocados and pears and peaches and yeah, so it's really fulfilling to see the end product. And this is something you can really touch. It's tangible. So uh, I understand. And back to Mother Nature, the soil. I love the smell of of, so, of wet soil, actually. And um, it's. I agree. In the country, problems in the economy. In Africa, yes. we tend to say that um, farmers are supposed to be poor. But I don't think you're poor. I think uh, the idea of poverty is a mindset. It is a mindset. You don't... Did you hear that? 
the idea of poverty is a mindset. <laughs> wow. Joy. That's beautiful. And it's exactly the case. It's a mindset. So let's just listen. I'm sorry, I keep pausing, but there is there are so many nuggets in this um in this video. There are so many beautiful things that are being said and shown and and she's right. It's it's all in the head. And I think that's why it's good to be crazy and you know, intelligent crazy in the sense that you're changing something and you're creating an impact um, you know, around you. And as well, uh, if you believe that farming is for poor, then so be it. There is another farmer who's making a lot of money and who's also, you know, creating an impact in the community by employing people, by feeding the community and so on and so on. So what else? What else? What else do I say? Poverty is, is something that you actually you're taught. You know, you're taught you can do anything to improve your life and you don't have to do the normal things that are or the status quo that people teach you that you have to go to school and become a doctor, become an engineer to become rich. Wealth, you can create it from anything, from the passion that you ha that you have. You know, you just need you just need a plan, a passion and you can become you can have all that. Can I hug you? Can I hug you? The two P's, plan and passion. OK plan and passion please <laughs> i feel like you spoke from the soul right. and Thank you. it really touched me mm. i mean growing up in africa mm. we're told to go to school yes get married mm -hmm. get a job mm -hmm. and that's it mm -hmm. your house have your cars you've made it in life mm -hmm. right yeah. this is something that is not just in africa i think it's international where there was a time where you know you had to you're brought up go to school go to college university find a job get married get kids so that was like the the circle but now things are changing and i think it's really beautiful to know that it's not because you don't have a university degree that you're stupid no you're not you can use your passion and that's why i think like blue collar jobs today are also um it, it, it's a great opening because if you love what you're doing, then go for it. Do not follow the status quo and just, you know, just get lost in, in the society. Just be different, be different and you will make it for sure. So many young Africans out there who think like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For Based on your experience, do you think there's something wrong with our education system? I would actually say there is something uh concretely wrong with our education system but that's why i want to give my message to every young african out there dare to be different dare not to follow the path or the ways that everybody is follow you can be different and carve your way out and still make a living and be happy and make an impact right carve your way through because most of the times we, we take one direction and then we find a wall or a closed door and then we just stop there. Just carve your way, just go around it or just create your own path to what you want to do. And that's really true. And you can make an impact because the obstacles that you're facing right now, just use them as stepping stones towards your goal. And that will really help you. So stop. You know, stop following everybody else. Just follow your path. You came to this world alone. You will leave this world alone. So it's up to you to create your narrative and for you to create doors and open doors and knock at doors. And I mean, if you do not take action, if you do not take the risk to take the action, then of course nothing will come to you easily. So you have to struggle to get where you're going, but the end result is beautiful, really. So go for it. You know, you can do that. You can do that. Right. How many people have you employed in here? I do employ uh, 12 people, but we also do have uh, volunteers who come through the training process. 
training process yes so we do tra you are training people yes i do train uh the local community and then i do have staff from other organizations that come we train them here for a period of over a month you know impart them with skills so that they can go out there establish their own guidance if they can you know the more people get into this the better for the country the better for the economy so that we don't need to depend on our country or our government to support us you know and empower the youth they are the future of any country so that's what i do i focus more mostly on youth and women and I train them so that they can also go and start their own and feed their families. When a youth is empowered, a youth of a nation is empowered or the women of the community is empowered, then we'll be able to actually break the tendency of dependency on aid and other organizations from coming and help and, and, and really feeding us. You know, it's really building resilience and then also self-sufficiency for the long term. Because for instance, with COVID-19, think about it, if the borders are are closed and we are really relying and that's exactly what i said that's exactly what i said and i i truly agree with her the the young people are the future the women are the backbone of the society of the world you give to a woman she takes it back to her family it's as simple as that you educate a young person they always come up with new ideas. They always, you know, empower other young people and so on. So it's all about a generation of trying to break down uh, the, you know, the status quo and all this, you know, beliefs that we have as we grow up. And then, you know, it's all about educating the young people and, of course, giving back to the society, you know, as women, we are the backbone. You know, you give it to her, she takes it back to the family and, you know, it makes it grow. So right, with COVID-19, honestly, when the borders are closed, I mean, and you're depending on, you know, other people to, you know, to help you, then you're done. So no, no. And depending on other countries to provide us with food, who's going to feed us? Really? Our, our well-being is dependent on the mercy of other countries. So that's why I do that, to empower my own people. Self-sufficient now. And resilience. The major challenge that you faced when you started establishing this in here? Just like any other business, the beginning few years to months, uh, months to years are usually very difficult. Um, for me really is uh, because this project here in South Sudan is actually a brainchild of another project that I have in, 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 in Uganda. Okay. So, you know, when as an entrepreneur you have tried something and have proven that it's actually viable, then getting to... To, to, to have it peak speed is usually difficult or to convince other stakeholders that this thing is actually viable and we can actually um, we can expand it that has all that has been the biggest uh, challenge for me talking about expansion where do we see uh, Ubuntu farms by the way I even forgot to ask you what is the name of your farm but that's Ubuntu right <laughs> yes it is called Ubuntu farm and, and why Ubuntu Ubuntu because we cherish the idea of togetherness as a people one person cannot build up uh, a nation so as a community as an entire community we can build our nation that's why i call it ubuntu where do we see ubuntu farms in the next five years in the next five years we see ubuntu farm uh, along the entire uh, value chain process right now we are producing but we also want to enter into into processing uh, for instance we'd like to have a, a, a greenhouse here if we get a greenhouse we're definitely going to increase our production at least fivefold and then also maybe mechanization having tractors and also a proper means of transportation because our roads can get really tricky during rainy seasons mm -hmm. so if we can get proper transportation we can really go far uh, I hope in the the next five ten years we're going to have more than 200 acres for sure and having ubuntu farm and gardens all over south sudan that's a big right. dream yes and everything boils down to you you're the, you're the main person behind it you yes. don't need investors i would love to have investors and that's why i am here actually would love to have stakeholders you know we're very open to having other people join us in this project so if you're in your room watching me right now i mean do me a favor send her a message and if you would love to invest in a farm Talk to her personally, 
not me. How many hectares or uh, acres do you have in here? Uh, right now we have seven acres, but we're really working to expanding it very soon. That is our goal. We really want to increase our production and expand our, our acres. Is this the only farm that you got or you got a, another farm that I know nothing about? Uh, we do have another, uh, another farm in Uganda. That is where my entire agriculture journey started. Wow. Yes. And how many acres are there? Uh, those are 12 acres. So 12 plus 7 is like 19 acres. I don't know. I, I mean, forgive my manners. Tell me how old you are. <laughs> I am 28 years. Whoa! Are you kidding me? I am 28 years. Yo, we, we have so many young Africans out there. What is your final message to Africans out there? My final message to Af continental Africans, Africans in the country, again, like I said, dare and challenge to be different. You don't have to follow the path that everybody follows. You know, you can be different, carve your way out of life and still make a great impact in the country and in the, in the continent. For my African brothers and sisters in the diaspora, I am actually telling you that you are welcome to come back home. Come back home to Africa and experience it yourself. You know, you should not focus so much on the uh, on the portrayal of the media of the Africa um, that they are showing you. The Africa we are in today is growing. It is developing. Come and see it for yourself. There's so many opportunities that you can get and that you can make a living out of. So please do come. We are here. We are living evidence that it can be done right here in Africa. That you also, if you want to come, we are here to give you the tools and the guidance so that you can also start your journey. So you're welcome. Come back and taste Africa for yourself. Uh, I'm really lack of what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's so out, outspoken as well. I love it. She's intelligent. She's beautiful. She's creating change and impact. She's motivating people and stuff like that. So, well, good. I, I don't know if you will watch this, Joy, but good job and uh, keep doing what you're doing. What? God damn. <laughs> Is it worth it to be a farmer? It is absolutely worth it. I could not take it any other way because the impact is amazing you know you are among the people that are like you and they appreciate the work that you that you're doing and you also really know that you're contributing directly to some of the biggest problems in this in this continent food consumer, insecurity who are the consumers of your vegetables we do supply hotels big hotels we do supply the market some of the markets here we also do uh, deliver door-to-door -door delivery to households they don't get shocked knowing that this is coming from their own country actually they do every time and that is the thing that I want to impart in them that we can actually grow our own. We can feed ourselves. Why are they shocked? Because we're so used to uh, depending on other countries to doing things for us, you know. So we don't believe in our own. And that is the narrative, the colonization narrative that we have adopted as a people. And we want to change that. If you have the chance to <laughs> What will it be? It will be the mindset of the people, the mindset of our leaders and the young people. You know, we just need to believe in ourselves that we have everything that it takes. You know, that we are amazing people. We are great people. Africa, our motherland, is a beautiful place to be. You know, the funny thing is that whenever you're in Africa, the feeling of of, of, of acceptance and being with your own people. I don't have to worry about uh, racial profiling or being harassed on the streets like I did in America. Yeah, you know, you, you racial profiling happens in the West, you know that. So just being with your own people and doing the things that you love and seeing it making an impact is amazing. I have to create this channel, whether you like it or not. You know, we don't have a name yet, but the link will be in the description. Do me a favor. Go there, subscribe, and be part of her family. You know what, what are you going to do on the channel for us? I am going to be showing you amazing things on agriculture trends in, in, in our garden and in South Sudan as a whole as we expand and actually really improve agriculture and food security in there South Sudan. There are so many young South Sudanese who never grew up here. Yes. They grew up all over the place. Yes. But now they don't want to come back. Yes. If you want to tell them to come back, what would that message be? The message would be the country is open for you to come. Really do come. Again, the imagery that is shown uh, to you out there is not the truth. Come and experience it yourself. We're here. We're willing to help you. We're willing to guide you. You know, we're willing to connect with you and show you the way we also started here. Trust me, this is my best video. 
in South Sudan. Like, I'm, I'm so emotional right now. I don't even know what to tell you. It's a favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana Baby, right here in the farm. Come back and connect to nature. And you know what? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and be part of this awesome farm. Right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And please, same thing for me. You know, like, subscribe, and share, you know, with your friends and family. And, you know, just... Uh, help me hit the 1,000 subscribers on this channel. And so thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.